The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever the things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Blair General Hospital, maternity ward. One moment after nephew. Go ahead, please. Oh, come on, Sally. How about it, will you? Huh? Joe Wayman, if I told you one Yeah, yeah, I... yeah, I know, but maybe you could change your mind. <laughs> Why, I'll, I'll buy you a hamburger if you'll go. A hamburger? Oh, why, lots of men would be a... Good evening. Can I help you? Help me? I don't know. Well, uh, did you want to see somebody, miss? Somebody? I don't know. Hey, she looks like she needs a doctor. Oh, look, honey, I'll call one of the doctors. Now, if you'll just give me your name. My name? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Kildare? How is she? I've given her a sedative, Dr. Gillespie. I think she'll sleep through until morning now. Here are the clothes she was wearing. That's a thousand dollar coat. Mm -hmm. No identification. Learn anything from your examination? Not much. She has a small bruise on her forehead and abrasions on both knees. Apparently suffered a slight fall five or six hours ago. Serious enough to cause a brain injury? No, no. Our first idea still goes. It's psychogenic amnesia. Repressive. I'm sure of that. <laughs> Ran against some situation she couldn't solve. She couldn't bear to think about. So her mind took over for her and blanked out her memory. Amnesia. Well, what do you want, Big Ears? I hate to interrupt, Dr. Gillespie. Well, then why are you doing it? Well, because Dr. Carew just called. He's on his way down here, that's why. Carew, huh? <laughs> now, what brings our beloved superintendent out of his fleece-lined penthouse? He may have a report from the police. Oh, mm -hmm. how is that girl, Dr. Gillespie? No better in the morning, Parker. Sleep right now. Oh, poor child. Must be awful to get amnesia and have your mind go completely blank. Parker, if that's a definition of amnesia, you've had it for years. Oh. Now, get out of here. Well, you don't have to shout at I me. I know I don't have to, but I enjoy it. Now, Scott. Oh, you. Well, oh. Miss Parker, I will never, please. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Dr. Blue. I didn't see you coming. I... All right, Parker, it's all right. You didn't hurt anything but his gardenia. Come in, come in, Carew. Personnel in this hospital simply must learn to... <clears throat> well, however, I didn't come here for that. No? <laughs> Remarkable. Uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, the missing persons bureau is sending someone over. I assume you'll have the patient ready for photographing, questioning. Why, that's impossible, Dr. Carew. 
I've given her a sedative. She's in no shape to be questioned tonight. Well, now, Dr. Kildare, I have to consider the best interests of the hospital in matters like this, and, and I'm... I'm considering the best interests of my patient. I think you'd better let me decide what may be... Carew! The... Do you know anything about a dress designer named, uh... Uh... Ah, yes. Yeah, John Tan. John Tan? Why, only that he's terrifically expensive. I, uh, my wife once said, occasionally told me. Well, this girl's clothes come from there. You know, it might be unfortunate if you fail to give proper care and protection to the favorite daughter of some prominent, wealthy, influential family. Well, now, Dr. Gillespie, I, I didn't realize... Some that family she... that might decide to get even... For such treatment. I mean, uh, our first concern is the patient, of course. Mm. And tomorrow would probably be soon enough. Some family that might have influence of the Board of Regents. Or whenever you and Dr. Kildare think she's ready. Uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, if you will excuse me, I think I'd better go and make a phone call right away. Uh, I tell you, I don't know. I can't remember. I want to try. I want to remember, but I... I... There, I can't. there, there, now, it's all right. Dr. Gillespie and I understand that you're trying, and we're trying to help. I really do want to remember. And sometimes I, I almost can. And then I start to get terribly frightened. And I can't remember anything. Well, now, I think you've remembered quite a lot of things already. We're pretty sure that you've lived in New York most of your life. You know the city. You know something about literature, music, you speak a little French. Your parents are probably quite well to do. No, no, I have no parents. I I'm quite sure of that. Why are you sure? How can I tell you when I don't remember? No, of course you can't. Well, suppose we try something else. Now, you close your eyes for a moment and try to imagine the scene I'm describing. All right. Now, you're standing just outside the main entrance of the hospital. You have your memory back and everything is wonderful and you want to go home. Yes. So you step over to the curb get into a taxi. And, and, and the driver closed the door. And he says, where to, miss? And you answer. And I say, I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. But you don't answer because you've changed your mind. You don't want to go home. Instead, you want to go to see someone you care a great deal for. Yes. Uncle George. Oh, so you have the driver take you to... 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 I don't know. I just said that I don't know any Uncle George. Oh, sure you do. What did he call you when you were a little girl? What was it he used to call you? Why, it was... It... I don't have any names. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I want to remember, but I can't. Oh, please, can't you help me? Oh, please. And so, as I told Dr. Carew here, I didn't learn of my daughter's disappearance until I got home from Baltimore a few hours ago. Been down there for three days on business, you know. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Bradley is head of Bradley and Company Limited. Branches in all the principal cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you got home, then, the, the, the housekeeper told you your daughter was gone. Yes. She said Alice slipped and fell on the stairway yesterday, hmm. but uh, got up at once and seemed all right. An hour afterwards, she left the house and hasn't been back. I thought until I called there that she might have gone upstate to her Uncle George. Uncle George, huh? Well, Mr. Bradley, has there been anything strange or unusual that you've noticed in her actions lately? Well, as a matter of fact, there has, Dr. Kildare. I suppose I should have called on a doctor, but I didn't expect anything like this. I understand her mother is not living, Mr. Bradley. I, uh, lost my wife in an unfortunate accident many years ago. Uh -huh. Well, it's possible, of course, that the girl here isn't your daughter, but everything does. Well, from the photograph the police showed me, I'm positive she is. Couldn't I see her now to make sure? Well, I think so. Parker said she'd have her ready in five minutes. Let's go see. It's only a few doors down the corridor. If you step this way, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. Well, I think you should understand a few of the possibilities here, Mr. Bradley. She may not recognize you. Probably won't, in fact. Yes, I, I realize that. It's until then. possible to predict what her reaction may be. I think I understand. Well, here we are, gentlemen. Um, better call the nurse, I imagine. Parker, is it all right?
right to come in now? Yes, Dr. Gillespie. I was just coming to tell you. Yeah, yeah. All right, Mr. Bradley, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Hello, Alice. How are you, honey? Who? Who are you? Why, I'm your father, darling. Don't you know me? No! No, you're not! Go away! Go away! Alice, You're not my father! You're not! You're a murderer! And you're going to kill me, too! Please, Alice. Make him go away! Don't let him come near me! You better go outside, Mr. Bradley. No, 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 you have any spirits of ammonia? Yes, Doctor, right here on the train. Give her one ampule and half a glass of water. I'll be right back. All right, Dr. Kildare. Seems to me the only sensible thing to do under the circumstances. Oh, how is she, Dr. Kildare? She'll be all right now, Mr. Bradley. Kildare, uh, Mr. Bradley has been stating his intentions of taking his daughter home tonight. Oh, but that's impossible. He's in no condition to leave here. Kildare, now, let's not be hasty. I happen to be her father, Dr. Kildare, and in my opinion, she'll be a lot better off in her own home than she will be here in an institution. Well, I happen to be her doctor, Mr. Bradley, and in my opinion, she can't be moved. Now, Dr. Kildare, I backed you up in the matter of the police, but this is different. Mr. Bradley happens to be very influ... <clears throat> I mean, he's the girl's father, and I must insist... Carew, that... I've been thinking about retiring. But you can't. This hospital... The value of your name to it, I, I, I won't even think of it. I may buy a farm up in Connecticut somewhere and raise pineapples. Dr. Gillespie, I, I, I won't even hear another word. I, Oh, dear. Mr. Bradley, I'm inclined to believe that consideration for the uh, welfare of your daughter does necessitate her remaining with us for the present. <laughs> That's that. Rank only records four other cases of repressive amnesia and seven, three. That are similar, at least. Seven used hypnosis with one. The others were treated by locating areas of disturbance. Uh, I think we've spotted at least two of those areas. Yes. It seems that her emotional conflict stems from the fact that she's Alice Bradley and that she has a father. Or that this particular man is her father. She mentioned an Uncle George this morning, about the only name she wasn't scared of. Bradley mentioned the same name. Also, she used the word murderer when her father came into the room. Can't be sure what she meant by it, though. She didn't even consciously recognize Bradley at the time. But her mind did. <laughs> Interesting, though. Human minds are fascinating things, Jimmy. They're like strange, unexplored countries, each one different from every other. And you never know what you'll run into. Now, who in the tarnie? Gillespie speaking. Oh, Molly Bird. What? Yeah, yeah, we'll be right up there, Molly. Well, Jimmy, we can stop trying to find out what's in the patient's mind. And start worrying about finding the patient. What? Yes. The girl has disappeared. Gone. Her room is empty. <laughs> Turn to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I just can't help it. I blame myself for the whole thing, Dr. Gillespie. I shouldn't have gone out and left her alone. She was sleeping so peacefully, or at least she seemed to be. And after all, no one told me to stay right with it. So Walker! I just... Yes, Dr. Gillespie. You've been quacking for ten minutes like an old mother duck. Well... So either shut up what? or lay an egg. Oh, horrible man. Oh, Kildare, any luck? Not much, Dr. Gillespie. Wayman's out in front. 
cab driver. She apparently left the building, all right. Molly Bird finally just threw a wardrobe and put on a spare nurse's uniform. Yeah, clever about it, too. Managed to get out of her room and leave the building without being seen. And she's put us in quite a spot. Hmm. After we insisted, kept here. Yeah, Carew will have a short circuit and blow a pearl button. I'd like to see the... Come in! Uh, you, Wayman. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, me. That's right, Dr. Gillespie. Find out anything, Joe? Sure, boss. Benny took her in his cab. She gave him an IOU because she didn't have no money, and he figured it was okay because he thought she was a nice kid. Uh, he just got back. Back from where? Where'd he take her? <laughs> Doc, you ain't gonna believe this, but so help me. Benny says he leave her out at the main entrance of Woodlawn Cemetery. <laughs> Slow down, Joe. Looks like something white over there through the bushes. Something white is the last thing I want to see in this place. No, not if it's in a nurse's uniform. Flash the light over that way. Okay, boy. Hey, it's a dame, all right. Yeah, stop the ambulance. It's bound to be her. I was getting scared we'd missed her. It's okay? Yeah. Now get a blanket out of the back and bring it with you. It's cold. All right. I'll be right with you. <laughs> well, Miss Bradley. Dr. Kildare, you remember. Oh, you brought a man and said he was... I don't have any father. I don't. Of course not. It was all a mistake. And everything's all right now. Here's the blanket for us. Thanks, Joe. Here, honey. Let's put this around you. Can't have you catching cold. There. I was cold, I guess. How did you happen to come here, Alice? Cemetery, this time of night. I don't know. I think I wanted to see someone. Oh, who? It seemed like it was a beautiful lady who died a long time ago. Oh, she's she been serving. Uh, do you know what her name was? I can't remember. Where did she die? Was it in New York? No. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was in Switzerland. Switzerland? It was on a lake. In a boat. And that's what they said. But it wasn't. I know it wasn't. Well, then what did happen? Happened? He did it. He, he murdered her. How do you know? Because, because she told me he did it. Oh, gee, boy, sir. I don't know. If he isn't alive, how could she tell you? It, it was a diary. I found her diary. And she said, Albert is taking me to Europe next week. I know... He plans to kill me while we're there. Alice, do you know who Albert is? No! No, I don't remember. Is it the name of your... Uh... No! No, I can't remember. I don't know. That's all I right. didn't say anything. Now, now. I didn't say anything. We're going to take you back now. Back where you'll be safe. Come on. Get up now. Oh. Oh, please take me back. Now, you start walking toward the ambulance. And I'll be with you in a moment. All right. Boss, you want us to give her a hand? Yeah. Then? Oh, well, wait a second. I want to take a look at this headstone. Got a match, Joe? A match? Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. I I'm going to step on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Hmm. Martha Bradley, beloved wife of Albert J. Bradley, born October 5th, 1909, died on June 20th, 1936. Who is she, Doc? The girl's mother. Come on, Joe. Let's get her back to the hospital. <laughs> story seems to fall together pretty well now. Yes, her mind saved her from the situation by blanking out her identity, by repressing the realization that she was Alice Bradley, the father who had killed her mother. So we're sure of that much. But where do we go from there, Jimmy? I don't know. Of course, she's had a terrific emotional shock. It may be tough to bring her out of it. And suppose we do. We can't send her right back home into the same situation. Well, I'm afraid I don't see how we can keep from doing it. But if he is a killer... Jimmy... A doctor can only help a patient just so far. There always comes a point where the case passes out of his hands. Nothing more he can do about it than be... All right, Parker, you're sorry to interrupt, but... But what? 
Mr. Bradley's here to see you. Bradley. Well, don't just stand there. Send him in. All right, Mr. Bradley. You may go in now. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Have you had any success yet in helping my daughter? Kildare, suppose you inform our visitor of the nature of our present conclusion. Uh, Mr. Bradley, a couple of weeks ago, your daughter came across an old diary that belonged to your wife. Do you know anything about it? Why, yes, there was one. Uh, in the diary, your wife claimed that you were taking her to Europe for the purpose of murdering her. But... Now, Alice believed that you did. That I killed Martha? Gentlemen, is this the reason for the mental state Alice is in? Yes. Oh, the poor child. I should have told her, but... Well, the memories were painful and... Well, here's what happened. Martha made that same accusation in letters to several of our friends. She was nervous, unstrung. It was her doctor, in fact, who advised the trip to Europe. Once we were there, she seemed more herself. And then one day in Switzerland, she was out on the lake in a canoe. It capsized, and she couldn't swim. Mm. And you, Mr. Bradley, you could swim? Oh, yes, I could. Gentlemen, my wife took the boat out alone. I'd gone climbing with a party of 20 from the hotel. Some of them live right here in New York now. As a matter of fact, Martha's brother, George, was with us. Well, Mr. Bradley, I... I apologize for what I was almost thinking. It's all right. I can understand why you thought so. Uh, as much as I hate to interfere with the exchange of mutual confidences, uh, may I remind you that we still have a patient who isn't cured. I think I may know a way to help her now. Dr. Gillespie, do you mind if I have a try at it? Mind? <laughs> You'd do it anyway. Sure, Jimmy, go ahead. <laughs> I want you to keep thinking that, honey, all the time. That you trust me, that I'm going to help you, and that everything's going to be all right. Yes, Dr. Kilder. And keep remembering Uncle George, too, because I'm going to read you a letter from him now. Remember all the time that Uncle George wrote these words. Yes. Now it says, Dear Albert, I am terribly upset to hear what's happened to Alice. How could she possibly believe such a thing of you, her own father? No. No. Now remember, it's Uncle George who wrote this. It goes on. As both of us know that Martha didn't mean what she wrote in that diary. Both of us know that she was alone in the boat. And that you were with me. That you couldn't possibly have killed her. If we could only tell Alice this. Oh, Stretch. I... Stretch. I feel so strange. If Alice could only remember, so I could tell her that she had nothing to worry about. That everything is all right. That you, her father, are innocent that you love her very much. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! My father. Where's my father? Mr. Bradley, you may come in now. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Gillespie speaking. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah Kildare's here, too. Send her in. That was Molly. Says Alice Bradley's been discharged and wants to say goodbye before she leaves. Oh, good. 
She's quite a gal now that she's got her memory back. <laughs> Beautiful young girl returns to arms of wealthy, doting father. <laughs> Traditional happy ending. Yes, I guess it is at that. Anybody home? Oh, come in, Miss Bradley. Hello, you two. Well, young lady, you look as though you had a pretty fair chance of living. Oh, I feel fine, Dr. Glassie. I... I wanted to thank both of you for what you did for me. Uh, thank Kildare if you want to. You know, Dr. Kildare, I was... I was thinking of something funny on the way up here. Oh? Well, what was it? Well, when I came here to the hospital, I didn't have any memory at all. Now I'm a woman with a past. Uh-huh. Dr. Kildare, you're responsible for the whole thing. Oh, well, Jimmy. Well, I... Goodbye, I... Dr. Kildare. Uh... You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Dr. Kildare is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Lorreen Tuttle, Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Bill Conrad, Ed Max, and Marie Blake. Dick Joy speaking.